Welcome. Welcome to Shooting is Watermelon. Today we are going to master testing in Rust using RS test testing framework. RS test is a testing framework for Rust, just like PyTest for Python. PyTest, however, is quite mature at this point. It has tons of third-party plugin support and also almost 800 contributors. Compared to PyTest, RS test is still on its initial phase, but I can confidently say it's mature enough to depend on. It is actively maintained and got a fair share of contributors as well. RS test also inherits many concepts from PyTest such as parameterization and fixtures and helps you writing better tests compared to the built-in testing toolchain. To demonstrate the utilization of RS test, we will simulate a very simple and ad hoc backend for an online shopping service. In this project, we imagine a user adds products to their cart and sends out an order. Then the closest and available shop picks up this order and delivers their products to the user. First, we will create our Rust project and open that up in VS Code. Then we will create a module named Shopping and under the Shopping module, we will have another module named Models. For the next step, the first struct we need is named Product. The name is probably self-explanatory. Each product has a name and a price. The type for price will be F64. Usually, you need another package for that named Big Decimal. This is not specific to Rust, however. Computers do suck at computing monetary values, so as a workaround, every language has a similar third-party package, conveniently named as Big Decimal. For our simple example, however, it can stay as F64. We also need another struct named cart with items prop as a vector of products. In order to test the behavior, this cart struct will have a method named total price, which will be the sum of the prices of every product in items prop. We will not worry about the implementation for now though. We will first create a test and then implement the behavior. So we will create test module. We also need to import everything on the top level as well in order to test product and cart struts. Our first test will be very simple. We will create an instance of cart and add two example products in it. One is apple with $1 and the other one is banana with $3. At the end, we will assert if the total price returns the sum of these products, which is $4. If we run this test now, we will see it fails saying not implemented yet. That's because we haven't implemented total price method yet. So let's go ahead and implement this behavior. We'll first iterate over items, get the each product, take the price of it and sum all together. And if we run the test again, we can see it succeeds. For the next part, I will try to implement a discount behavior. A user might add a coupon to their cart to get discount. We will add coupon struct, which will have a code prop and an amount prop. We will also add this coupon to cart, which will be an optional coupon. As we added the coupon field to cart struct, our formal test fails to compile since it requires to have coupon field. We can pass none to here because in this test we are not testing anything about discounts. We will create another test to test the behavior of coupons. Since it will be very similar to the first test, I will simply copy from there and paste it over here. The difference is this time we will have some coupon. The code for the coupon is not really important. We will set the amount to $2. As the total of the cart is $4 and we have a coupon with $2, the total price method should return $2. Now when we run this test, we will see it fails. Specifically, it's saying it returned $4 instead of 2. It's because we haven't implemented this behavior yet. In the total price method, first we will move the return value to a variable named initial price. Then we will get the discount amount from the coupon. Option has a map method to convert the inner type to something else. We don't have anything to do with coupon's code, we only need the amount. We can use map to change the option of coupon to option of F64, which is the amount of coupon. And then we use unwrap or method to unwrap it. With unwrap or method, we can return a default value if the option is not. We also need to define the initial price type to F64, because Rust cannot infer the type for some reason. After we save, we see another error. This error is saying we are moving the coupon's amount prop into the function, which is a shared reference of self. In this context, we only need a reference of coupon, so using asref method on option would solve our problem, since it returns a reference to the coupon and does not move it to the current stack. Now we have no problem running test with coupon. Now a case where coupon is less than the total price is understandable. What about a case where it's larger? No market in this world will owe you money for doing business with them. So for our simple case, it's returning zero for the case that is less than zero is convenient and acceptable. We will create a third test to test out the case with large coupons. We will again copy and paste from the test above and change some stuff. 
For this case, let's set the coupon amount to something larger than the total sum of the product's prices. $5 is good enough for this. In this case, we expect total price to return 0 instead of negative 1. If we run the test, we will see our new test fails because it returns negative 1. We need to update the implementation of total price method again. In total price method again, we will move the return value to a new variable named final price. And then we will match the value of final price. If it is less than 0, we will simply return 0. If it is 0 or greater, however, we will return the same value. We can see the test passes this time. Now we have written three test functions to test only one method. And there are only slight differences between them. First one is the coupon itself. It might be none, some with an amount, or some with an amount that is larger than the total price itself. The return value of total price also changes depending on the presence and amount of coupon as well. For these type of slight variations between tests, we can use parameters. The built-in testing toolchain in Rust does not support this, but RSTest provides the necessary tools to get this behavior. To install RSTest, we can use cargo add subcommand. In order to use RSTest macros globally, we need to enable it at the root of our crate, which is lib.rs file. With macro use and extern crate, we can enable it globally. This, though, gives another error. That's because RSTest is a test dependency. We also need to enable it when the compilation environment is testing environment by using CFG test macro. Before rewriting the tests in one test, we will comment the last two tests out and only leave the first one. To convert a regular test to RS test, the only thing we need to do is to change the test macro to RS test. We will first move the dynamic parts of our test to variables. The return value of total price will be expected output. And the coupon of cart instance will be coupon instead of none. Since the parameter name of cart and the variable name are the same, we can simply remove the left part. It will have the same effect. These variables, however, don't exist yet, so we need to add them to the parameter of our test function with case macro provided by RSTest and define their types. Coupon parameter is an optional coupon, while expected output is an F64. When we save again, we will see another error saying no case is found, because we haven't defined any values for these cases. To define the values of different cases, we use case macro as a function header. At this point, we are refactoring our test function to have the same effect as first test, so we will add only one case, where coupon is none and the expected output is $4. And when we run, we will see our first case passes successfully. Our second test was a little bit different. Instead of no coupon, it had a coupon with $2 discount, and the expected output was $2 instead of 4 Our third test was slightly similar to the second one. So we will copy and paste it and change the coupon to $5 and the expected output to 0. And when we run the test again, our three cases pass. That also means we can simply remove the tests we have commented out, as we don't need them anymore. Case macro generates three different test functions under the hood. They are named case 1, 2 and 3 and so on and so forth automatically. Sometimes you might wish to differ the cases by giving them a custom name. In order to name a case, we can use double colon and give it a name. The first case was testing the behavior of total price without any coupons. Second case was with a coupon and the third one with a large one. This time when we run tests, we can differ the test by the name we've given. Now we will see how we can use fixtures in RS test. But what is a fixture? And how does it differ compared to the parameterization? Parameterization is a way to create subtests from a test using its slight variations. On the other hand, fixtures are instances of an object shared among tests. You usually use fixtures for resource-heavy instances that require too much boilerplate to set up, such as repositories dealing with database connections. First, we need to build up an environment to utilize fixtures. We will create an unnamed order status. It will have three different values, pending, assigned, and on delivery respectively. We need to add this order status to the cart struct as a prop. We will shortly name it status. Cardstruck will also have another new prop named ID with type of U64. You'll realize when we do that we will get some complaints from the Rust compiler. That's because we haven't defined any values for these new props. We will simply define ID as 0 and status as pending. Since we don't test against these props in this test, any value is ok. They won't affect the result of the tests. Then we will create a new module named repositories under shopping. We will create an ad hoc cart repository struct. It will only have one field, a vector of cards. 
and to import card struct in this module, we also need to make it public and then import it. Then we will create a method named assign. This method will have a mutable reference to the self, since it will change the status of a single card which lies within self. It also needs ID parameter for card, of which we will change the status. In a real environment, this method would probably be asynchronous and it would probably have a user ID to check the permissions. But our example is that simple, so we don't need those. We will first create our first test to define the behavior of assign method. We will create an instance of card repository and populate it with cards, which is only one. Since the assign method will only deal with ID and status, items and coupon props can be anything. Their value won't change the behavior of assign method. In order to initialize cards and products, we need to publicize them and their fields as well. Then we will call assign method on card repository with ID 0. Since assign method has a mutable reference to the self, the card repository variable has to be mutable as well. Then we will get the first instance of cart in the cart repository. Calling unwrap would panic if there was no cart in the repository, but in this case we guarantee there is exactly one cart in it, so it's safe. Then we check if the status of the cart is assigned. We also need to make order status in uncomparable. To do that, we need to mark it with debug and partial EQ derive macros. We know the test will fail because we haven't implemented this behavior. Let's get back to assign method and do it. I will get some cart instance if there exists a cart with provided ID. Then I will change the status to assigned. We get a compile time error when we do this. That's because we essentially mutate the status of a cart instance which is inside this repository. However, iter method iterates over this vector and gets immutable references of cards that is in this repository. To fix this we need to use iter mute which iterates over this vector and gets references that is mutable. We can see the test passes successfully. We will create this patch method, which is more or less the same thing. In the test, I will simply copy and paste the code from test assign. The only difference is that we'll call the dispatch method and the status should be on delivery at the end. The implementation of dispatch method is also quite similar, only difference is changing the status to on delivery. We can see dispatch method works when we run the tests. If you noticed, we have copied the exact same instance of card repositories in both tests. Instead of initializing the identical card repositories in every test, we can also move it to its own fixture and use it in each test. To create a fixture, we mark a function with fixture macro. The fixture function ideally and mostly returns an instance, so this will return a card repository. I will copy the instance from a test and paste it inside card repository fixture. And then we will simply get rid of the instances of card repositories in each test and inject the fixture in parameters using its name. In these tests, we mutate the card repository so we inject the fixture as mutable. Also, we need to mark the new test with RSTest macro. And when we run the test, it will pass like nothing has changed. The name of parameter has to be the same as the name of the fixture function. But if you want to rename it, you can simply use from macro, again provided by rstest, to rename the parameter name. When we do that here, we also need to change all the variables referring to it as well. You can also inject another fixture in a fixture. To demonstrate this, we can simply take the single card from the repository, move it to its own fixture, and inject it as a parameter to the card repository fixture. And when we run the tests, we will see our tests run just fine. If you made it through here, thanks for watching. I hope you learned how to use fixtures and cases in RS test while testing in Rust. I will see you in the next video.